you. No, 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 yeah. Before I get into the video, this segment is not sponsored, but I do want to give a quick shout out to audio.com. I've been using audio.com for almost like two years now. If you want roar to free music with that doesn't sound like, you know, generic BS with an easy to use license you can use pretty much anywhere without any added hassles, check out audio.com. I reached out to audio.com a couple weeks ago and they set me up with a link where you can get 70% off your first year. Hands down the best deal you can get from Roar to Free Music, audio.com, check it out in the description. All right, to get started, I'm gonna right click in my media pool and go to new fusion composition. I'm gonna name it 3D text two, because I have one that I did earlier. And then I'm gonna change this from 24 frames per second to 30. 30 gives a more of a smoother animation. You can crank it up to 60 if you want to, but I'm gonna leave it at 30 for now and hit create. Should pop up in your media pool and then I'm just double click to enter into fusion. So now in fusion, you just have a media out and we're gonna grab a text plus node. Oh, I'm gonna delete this. And I'm gonna grab a 3D text node. So the font that I'm using within this effect is called Gore, I think Gore Wild, and it does not support numbers. So in order to have numbers, I have to mix and match the text. So go to my text plus and hit one on the keyboard, go to the inspector tab and type in 3D text. I can use the modify character level styling to actually modify my 3D text. So if you never used it before, you go right click in the dialog box, select character level styling, the modifier tab will open up, click on modifiers, and then within the viewer, you can select the part of the text that you want to modify. So now I'll go here into the viewer, drag and select the three, you'll notice it's selected with the brackets on the top and bottom. And then I can hit the drop down on the font. The font I'm gonna use is called Ghastly Panic. I'm gonna select, it was one of the few fonts I can find that looks similar to the Gore Wild, which I'll leave links to in the description as well. Then I'm just gonna select the rest of the text, hit the drop down again, and then go to Gore Wild. And some of our reasons this font doesn't distinguish a difference between the lowercase t and the capital T. So I'm actually gonna go in here now and select the T. So I'm gonna go in here now and select the T, and then I'm gonna go over here and type in ghastly panic once again, and I'm gonna use the T for ghastly panic to create the capitalized T for 3D text. Again, if you never use character level styling, this is the way you can go through and select different colors, shapes, sizes, and stuff like that for your text, and have it all within one dialog box or one text node. <laughs> Now the whole thing with the character level styling and everything you don't need to use if you're using a font that supports numbers or you don't need to do anything as far as creating different sizes for your letters and stuff like that. This is only necessary if you want to use different sizes, different lettering and different fonts combined together. Otherwise you can just type in your font or type in your text that you want and just continue with the rest of this video. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, we're supposed to be doing 3D text while we mess with the text plus, Again, we're gonna use the text plus to drive the look of our 3D text. So click on the 3D text now, go over here to the dialog box, right click, go to connect to, character level styling, style text. So now if I hit this, type in two on the keyboard. So now using that modifier from the text plus, I can use it in the 3D text. So now if you're following along with me, this text here actually kind of clips into one of those. So I'm gonna go over here to tracking and kind of space it out a little bit. That way this little, this T here, I noticed when I was messing around with it, this T kind of clips into the X. Now looking at the three is really big. I want to change the size of it. I'm gonna have to go to the text plus, go back to the modifier, double click. Then I'm gonna select the three. Now I'm gonna change the size. It's gonna change here and gonna give, it's gonna look just fine. But over here, it's gonna look crazy because the way the 3D respect is working is basically making it a lot smaller. So instead of turning it down, I'm gonna actually have to turn it up. And I want about, about right there, right about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller than the D. So now I'm gonna text plus, it's gonna look crazy because it's gonna be extremely large, but we're not worried about that because we just need this as the modifier to drive the 3D text. So next we're gonna click on the 3D text, hit Control C or Command C if you're on Mac, double click in empty space, hit Control Shift V or Command Option V if you're on Mac. It's gonna create an instance. The instance node is basically the exact duplicate of the node that we copy, and we're gonna change the parameters like size and shape and stuff like that and it'll affect one another, but you also can de-instance them to change them individually. Click on the original 3D text, go over here to shading, go on uncheck use one material. The alpha, we're gonna turn it down to zero. You'll notice in the viewer that the text went away. We'll address that here in a minute. You're gonna click on instance, go over to shading. You're gonna right click and de-instance. You'll notice the green box went away. When the green box is not there, that means you can change the parameter of this particular node and it won't affect the original node. So with that being done, I'm gonna turn this up back to one. Then I'm gonna go down here to bevel material, right click, de-instance this, and then turn this down to zero. Then I'll take the output of my 3D text, 
connected to the instance and it should give me a merge 3D. If I click on the merge 3D, hit one on the keyboard, and now I have my 3D text back. The merge 3D select, I'm gonna go over here now and select a renderer 3D. Then I'll take the output of that and connect it to the media out. Now I hit two on the keyboard for the media out to bring it up in the viewer. Go back to my render 3D. Under render type, change it from software to hardware. It's less taxing on your computer, especially if you have a good graphics card. So now we need to customize our text. We're gonna click on 3D text, go to text and inspection tab. Hit the drop down on the extrusion. If you want to keep it simple, just turn up the extrusion depth and it pretty much just give you a 3D text. You can turn up the bevel depth and the width. You'll see it's starting to kind of bulge out. You really can't see what's going on because it's all white. So to, before we get too far into customization, we're actually gonna add some material. I'm gonna box select both of these nodes, move them to the side here. I'm gonna hit control space, type in replace. I'm looking for replace 3D material or replace material 3D. Enter, I'm gonna hold shift. And I think it's option on Mac and add it to the pipeline here. Then I'm going to the inspection tab, hit this uh, drop down, change alpha mode from replace to keep. Then I'll copy the replace material, click on the instance, make sure it's selected, hit control V or command V on Mac. That way you have the exact same settings. And I'm actually gonna use some material that's built into the Venture Resolve. Should be available in the free version of Resolve. If not, let me know in the comment section. So I'll go over here to effects, templates, fusion. We're looking for shaders. The one I like to use is called Cool Metal. I'm gonna bring it down here. And so with the 3D text nodes, the reason why we separate them like this is because now it gives us a front facing of the 3D text. It also gives the bevel as two separate materials. So I'm actually gonna right click this and ungroup. And then you can see all the nodes that was used in this material. And it's basically just using a fast noise. If I click on this and hit one on the keyboard, it's using a fast noise along with, if I click on color here in the stretches tab, there's a number of different gradients to kind of give you this texture material. That's being pumped into a color corrector. They have a transform blur and a rectangle that I don't need. So I'm just gonna box select those and hit backspace to get rid of them. Connect it to a spherical map. It's basically making a sphere of the 3D material. Then you go down here, you go into reflect base. It's creating the reflection of the 3D material. Still moving around 3D space. And then we got the wand, which is basically connecting it all together. And these nodes can be found individually just in the select tools menu if you wanted to do it that way, but I just did it this way because it has all the settings and everything pretty much set up for me. So now I took the output of the one node and connect it to replace material, and you should see the 3D material come into place. Just a few more tweaks, I'm gonna click on the reflect base and turn the glossy strength all the way up. Then I'm gonna turn the face on strength all the way up as well to give more of a metallic look. If you click on the sphere map, you have these rotation options here. This basically just rotates the, the material you're using around. So the more you rotate it, you get a different look of reflection. If you wanted to, you can animate this too just by right clicking and going to animate and then set keyframes or you can use atom curves. We're not gonna get into that today. So messing around with the material, you just kind of move it around until you get the look that you're looking for. I'm actually going to the color corrector and I want to change this to be a deep red. And then I'm gonna turn up the saturation. I'm gonna turn down the gain. Maybe turn up the contrast a little. Turn down the gamma and just kind of mess around with it to get the look that you're looking for. So now using the same nose, I'm gonna copy and paste them to the second replace material, but I'm gonna use a texture this time. So I'm gonna select all these. I'm gonna hold control and unselect the fast noise. Hit control C, double click down here, hit control V, move this to the side here. Then I'm gonna connect the one to, or two dash one to replace material. And so using the link in the description, you can go to polygon.com where you can find some free 3D textures. You can pay for some more advanced sections if you want to as well, but for right now, we're just gonna use a free one. I already have it downloaded and it's actually in my media pool. So I'm gonna go up here to the media pool, got it in bin two, and it's just JPEG. I'm gonna bring it down here. And I'm gonna take the output of the JPEG and connect it to the color corrector. And so now we have all red text. So I'm gonna click on the color corrector and go here and reset everything. And that's gonna give our texture. And then we're gonna go to the render 3D, click on lighting and shadow. And then we're gonna use a three point light system to actually, not only to illuminate our text, but give it more depth and texture. So click on the Merge 3D, hit Control Space, type in Light, we're looking for Spotlight. So now we got a Spotlight, you see it got a little bit of light there already. So I'm gonna click on Merge 3D, hit one on the keyboard. I'm gonna close my media pool. Now you see this here is the light itself. We'll click on this and then go to Transform and bring it back on the Z axis. So actually I'm gonna click on my 3D text and I wanna increase the size, but because the way we use the text plus to increase the size or decrease the size of the three, it's gonna have this kind of weird, it's gonna have this weird offset. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna leave that as it is, we're gonna leave the size as it is, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna move the render 3D to the side, click on merge 3D, hit control space, type in transform, and we're gonna use the transform 3D to increase the scale. 
and then move it down on the y-axis. So now going back to our light, we're going to go over here to inspect the tab. We're going to check use target. So now you see this little line here is basically locking in on our text. And then when we move it around, it's always going to be pointing at the text. Go over to the top now and move it on the x-axis. It's going to move it over to the side. About right there. It's going to basically have more light on that side. Then we're going to copy spotlight, hit control C. We're going to hit control V and connect it. So now it's a little bit brighter, but then you're going to go to transform. And this one here, you can bring it in a little bit closer if you want to, or further. We're going to bring it in a little bit closer, go to controls, and I'm going to turn down the intensity. So it won't be as quite as bright. Then double click an empty space, hit control V, create another spotlight, and connect it to the merge 3D. And this one here, I'm actually going to move to the behind the text. So I'm going to click on it, go to transform, and move this over here in 3D space. As we zoom in on the x-axis, you'll see it actually automatically rotates because it's still locked in on our text. I'm going to hit this little notch here to recenter this back to zero. Now I got a little bit of a spotlight behind our text, front and side of our text. And you can move these spotlight around however you want to to create the look that you're looking for. But with the spotlight, you see now we have more of a reflection on our material. It's giving us a true 3D look. Now, again, you can go in here to this fast noise. You can customize the look of it however you want. So actually, I'm going to move it about right there. Then you can increase the contrast, decrease the contrast, change it to how you want to. If you want it to be animated, you can turn up the seed rate and then turn up the seed just a little bit. So over time, it's kind of animating the reflections. That is more taxing on the computer, so use it as your own transgression. Now, with the facing of our text right now, we're using this, rec this rust material that we got offline, but you can use the materials that's in DaVinci Resolve as well. So if I go back to effects and say, for instance, they do have a gold, what's it, gold bump? Yeah, got this gold bump here, which I think I used in my last video about 3D text. So you bring this in, you actually will disconnect this one too. Take the output of this and connect it to the replacement material. Now it has like this gold brick texture. So we're actually gonna double click here. And if you don't want those bricks, just click on the background node and hit control P and it'll get rid of the little pattern. So you now have this kind of gold, but kind of not gold because the color is more or less like a bright yellow. If you close that down, then click on the node group itself. You can go in and tweak the color if you want to. And so I burned the blue all the way down to zero, and then I burned the green down to about 0 0.52. More or less a darkish, yellowish orange, but it's closer to gold than what was already there. You also use the video that you're working on as the texture for the 3D text. So if you go up here to Media Pool, just grab this video here, and then take the output of it and connect it to replace material. Now you have the actual video that you're working on as the texture. So now if I disconnect this and then go to the fix panel, and I think it's a glass material here as well. Got the glass dot here. I'm gonna take this down and connect it to replace material. So now you have the kind of glass-like reflective surface. If I go in here now and double click, I think it's using something similar to the gold where it's creating these little patterns. So I'm gonna click on this background node, control P, shut it down. So now you have this glass-like material. You can also just disconnect this and connect the media to. So now let's use the video texture on both the front and the bezel. So now going back to my original text, I'm going to close the media pool. And so to add a glow, I'm hit control and space and then type in glow, grab a soft glow. And then make sure you put this behind the render 3D. Well, actually, you can't put it before the render 3D anyway. So I'm going to hold shift and add it to my node. So this going to add the glow to it. And of course, you can customize and manipulate it how you want, how you see fit. And creating the glow on top of the spotlights is kind of a little bit overtaxing. So actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this, click on the render 3D, hit control space. I'm gonna type in erode, type in E-R-O, hit enter. I'm gonna move this up here. I'm gonna connect the, connect the render 3D to the erode dialect. Hit one on the keyboard so I can actually see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna go over to the inspector tab on the erode amount. I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. You can see what it's actually doing to the text over here. It's kind of broadening out the outline. And then I'm gonna grab a blur node. I'm gonna increase the blur just a little bit. Then I grab a background node. Basically, what I'm gonna do is create like a glow outline. So I'm gonna connect this to the background node. Click on the background node. I'm gonna choose white for right now. Hit OK. Take the output of the background node, connect it back to the render 3D. It's gonna create a merge node. Then I'm gonna click on that merge node, go over to the inspect tab on the operator, change it from over to under. So now that's giving us a glowing outline. And of course, you can add more glow to it by adding the soft glow right underneath the background node. And that'll really make it stand out. And then if you want to, then you can select all these nodes, hit Control C, double click, hit Control V, take the output of the render 3D connected to the row dialect, take the output of that glow, 
connected back to the merge one, which created a merge two. Under the merge two, changing from over to under again, and then going to the background though and change the color of it to something else. I'm gonna change it to red. And then in the roll dialect, you can actually increase the size a little bit, trying to give it more of an outline. And so now you have more of a true neon look to it. Now, if you pick up my animation plugin Keyflow, it has a globe built into it. It's far more advanced than this. So I'm gonna box select these for right now, hold shift, move this to the side, go up into the effects panel, click on edit under templates. Then I'm gonna click the little search bar here and type in Keyflow. And I'm gonna look for the Keyflow glow. And I'm gonna just add it to the no flow. So this will give you the glow effect that you saw in the demo at the beginning of the video. Like I said, this is a more advanced effect and it's actually a little bit more taxing. So for right now, I'm gonna hold shift and move it to the side. I'm gonna reconnect to the media out and then we're gonna animate the 3D text. I'm gonna close my media pool, change this to a single viewer, change the effect, I'm gonna close the effects panel. Then we're gonna use another modifier called the follower. So I'm gonna click on my original 3D text, go over to modifier, click on character level styling. Now, even though I'm using the, the level styling from the text plus, it still pops up here in the 3D text node with it being here, cause you're gonna use one modifier at a time. So with it being here, I can right click now within the 3D text and then select follower. So using the follower modifier, you can create individual animation in between different characters. So on the delay, I'm just gonna type in two and automatic, I'm gonna change from automatic to left to right. And I'm gonna leave between each character as it is. Then I'm gonna click on shading. Follower the animation that you want, or trying to view the animation, you can only see it once you set the keyframes. So if I go down here to, I should go down to rotation. I'm gonna move my playhead over to the very first frame. I said a keyframe. On the y-axis, I'm gonna change it to 90. So now you see it's turned sideways. Then I'm gonna go about frame 60, 70 or so. And then hit this little notch here to turn it back to default. So it's gonna create this animation where each letter is slowly turning over, over the course of the keyframe. So I'm gonna go back to the first frame and then I'm actually go to position and I'm gonna animate the z-axis. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up to one. Then set a keyframe. Now one is not actually far enough, so I'm gonna change it to, I think it's three. Then I'm gonna turn it all the way up to about 80 or 90 or so. And then set it back to default as well. Actually, I'm gonna swap this around. So I'm gonna go with the keyframes. I'm gonna go to this three dot menu and then select show only selected tools. I'm gonna hit the drop down here. And I'm just gonna move this back to here and then move this up to here. So right about here, yeah, we're at 90. You can see where you're moving the your keyframe to right here in the, in the timeline. So I want to be about right there. So now when it plays back, you see while it's zooming in, you also get the rotation of the letters. And there's a number of different ways you can use this, just kind of mess around with the different parameters to create your own unique looks. So now we'll close down the keyframes, open up the spline, select my 3D text, click over here to, a, to zoom to fit. I'm gonna select all, I'm gonna hit S to smooth. Then if you hit T on the keyboard, you can add more easing. I'm gonna select the numbers that are easy in. Towards the end here, I'm gonna crank it up to about 45, 50. Or you can just double click and type in 50. And I'm gonna leave the ease out, which is the beginning of it. It's gonna give me a more gradual slowdown towards the end of the animation. So I'm gonna close my spline. I'm gonna hold shift and reconnect my key flow glow. And now we're gonna go to the edit page. So if you've been following along, your fusion composition will be in the actual media pool. So you just bring it down to the timeline and go over to playback, render cache. I got my set to user. It's already starting to render. Once it's done, you have your animation. I got no cap. You should know that. Might just let you hold that. Might just let you hold that. Yeah, that's fire. And then we gonna go something like, I got no cap. Get the message, I'm the present. You should know that. Take no L's, but I might just let you hold that.